Hello friends. So here we have got Walter Benjamin. Walter. Walter Benjamin. Walter Benjamin speaking about the changes that took place in the work of art, works of art, because of developmental tendencies, certain developmental tendencies in art and also means of production. Means of production is, or the modes of production is the base and works of art and culture that is considered to be the superstructure. So, modes of production and how is it affected one of the superstructures, that is works of art. That is what Walter Benjamin is trying to tell us or focusing his attention on uh, in the age of mechanical reproduction. As a result of mechanical reproduction of works of art, what happened to works of art? In one word, he says that we can sum up the laws of authenticity and laws of order. Laws of authenticity. Authenticity of the work is uh, lost. Authenticity and also, and because of that, laws of aura. And what is this laws of aura? You know what is aura means? See, you can see saints now. Uh, pictures of saints, you will find a yellow, a ring of yellow, golden yellow around their heads. Just a ring like this. That is aura means. That means a very special quality of that person. So when we speak about aura of works of art, the special quality of the works of art. The same thing was uh, told to us by how came up and uh, Adorno, so you can remember that, no? when we were discussing culture industry, this is the main complaint that they made, that works of art, culture industry, works of art lost their aura, means uniqueness or the special quality, the intangible quality of the works of art, the originality, creativity, that's the thing. So otherwise what happens is mechanical reproduction means what you have we have got what you, what you call the eternal sameness. So instead of this loss of authenticity and aura, instead of this we have today eternal sameness. Same, same thing again and again. So once again, in one word we can sum up this idea saying that loss as, as a result of mechanical reproduction of works of art, loss of aura and then uh, authenticity, authenticity. Now we will discuss this in detail, point by point, and see the argument put forward by Walter Benjamin. First point here to consider is neutralization of traditional concepts. Neutralization of neutralization of traditional concepts. When we speak about art and works of art, we have some traditional concepts. What are those traditional concepts? Creativity. We speak about creativity. Then, what is creativity? And then what we, what we call is genius. Genius of the person. And also the work of art. Genius, mystery, something that you cannot the intangible quality of art we can sell out, some, some mystery and then eternal value, value we can sell, value. So these are the traditional concepts when we speak about a, works, a work of art. In creativity, what is creativity means? Something new is created, isn't it? Poem, self means speaks about poem, means maker. A poet is a maker. Something that you have not seen hitherto. Understand that? That, we are this, that is, that happens only once in history, before, not before, not after. See, for example, the wasteland, tears in this wasteland. Nobody else can write a poem like, nobody else uh, 
had written, nobody else will write. So that is one and only one. That is the uniqueness of work of art. Taj Mahal, one and only one. You cannot have a Taj Mahal in America, or you cannot have a Taj Mahal in Germany, or in France. Taj Mahal we have in India, and that is the one and the only one. So that is creativity of the work of art. Isn't it? So a, a, work, a work of art, the, the genius of a person who produces a work of art, we say, creativity. Means something new is created. This is one of the traditional concepts that we discuss about when we discuss works of art. Second is genius. Means originality. Isn't it? Uh, we speak about the genius of Shakespeare, the genius of Milton, the genius of Wordsworth. They have their originality. Or what we people say, the sixth sense of a poet. The sixth sense. We ordinary people, we have only five senses. But the poets and the creative writers, they have got the sixth sense. And then mystery. So, a work of art always conceals something. That is the reason now, conceals is some positive value. That is the reason why you find these works of art that are being discussed right from the beginning, the moment it appears, and the discussion continues years and years and years after. As we can see the T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland, there is, an, there, is a, there is a critical industry to probe into the mind of that great creative genius and writer that is T.S. Eliot. What is the time concept of T.S. Eliot? No idea. So we say about Shakespeare now, thou art not of an age but for all times, eternal value, it's because of this mystery. So these are the things we usually use in connection with works of art. Creativity, creating something new, genius, originality, mystery, always something is hidden. So we go on discussing, to find out, probing into the mind of the artist. See, then value is, it is valuable or it it has it, it is it lasts forever when you discuss the sublime longinus idea of sublime and concept of sublime he said what is sublime in something sublime people go to it again and again it is like the waves coming and breaking on the shore the waves rushing forward and breaks on the shore isn't it like that, critical waves will come and then break on the shores of the creative work. And still you, are, you can't find out the value, the eternal value of what, what has been going on in the mind of the poet or the artist or the painter or any work of art. And not only that, it has got the, it has, it, it, the, you are writing for posterity. Ranjari says one of the qualities of sublime is the writer writes for the posterity. The posterity will decide whether it is a great work of art or not. And posterity's decision depends on what? Depends on value. Value of the work. Understand? Value. So there you are. It is not exchange value. It is use value. Right? The value also, you have got different values. The use value, exchange value. A poet, a poet, a poem does not have exchange value. Means you cannot give a poem to a shop and say that give me a, a, some instead of that you give me some something to eat or something to drink like that. You cannot do that. So that's all about value. Let's forget about forget about that for the time being. What I am trying to tell you is this: these are the these are the terms that we use in connection with works of art. Creativity, genius of Shakespeare, creativity of Shakespeare, genius of Tiesley, genius of Browning, then mystery, that is the hidden, the hidden aspect of the work of art, then value. Now, since it's mysterious now, that's why you go and stand in front of a painting by Picasso. You can't understand what is it. You just go on. 
or a, or a painting by Michelangelo. Something is. Or when you listen to a beautiful song, say a gazelle sung by Pankaj Uddas, you are just moved a little bit. You are transported into a different world that is sublime of the world. Creativity of the world. Understand? So when you read a sentence like this, uh, as Thomas Hardy's Tests of the Day, Tests of the Day, Elba Mills, very famous now. Says, you remember that the statement about gods, he says, that is, they kill us for their sports sake. They kill us for their sports sake. When you say, when you listen to that, somebody reads it to you or you read it yourself, then what happens? What happens? You are moved. Or heard melodies are sweet, those on head are sweeter. You are moved. Or in the first answer in the what is the United Times? Alone and palely loitering, the sun just be there from the lake. No birds sing. No birds sing. See, it comes like a what? The last, uh, the, the tolling of a bell is this. Those four lines, huh? The term. La bell dame sans mercy. So that is the mystery of the art. That is the value of the art. Value for posterity. Artist is writing for posterity. Or if, if a work of art should have value, then it, it will be mystery, there is some mystery in it. It will be the product of a genius. And also you will find the genius is a creative writer. These terms are being neutralized as well, because of the mechanical reproduction of works of art. These terms. That is point number one to note. See, more so. The second thing point, second point is, so, I hope you got it. As a result of age of mecha mechanical reproduction of our sofa, these terms that we used to use in connection with creative work, arts, for so far, they have been neutralized. Second point is about reproduction, reproduction. So, according to Walter Benjamin, reproduction is an inherent quality of anything. What is that? Reproduction. Biological as well as non-biological. See, for example, you, a master is teaching his people how to make a notebook. Simple example I am giving you. So he will show you how to make it. Then what will the what will his students do? Pupils do? They will repeat it. They will reproduce it. So reproduction of anything is inherent in the production process. Understand? How you take that? How you look at it? How do you look at it? That's the point here discussed. Or suppose somebody makes a pot, a potter makes a pot and there are apprentices watching, what will they do? After making one pot and they will show, the master will show this thing and they will start the reproducing. So reproduction of, production involves reproduction. But in this case, so again you can see, huh? good old days, graphic art. Think about graphic art, good old, good old art. What happens? First, it was reproduced in wood, wood carving, isn't it? Wood carving or engraving, you can say. Not carving, but engraving. Wood cut is first. First step is wood cut. Wood cut. Then, Next stage of reproduction is engraving, engraving, and and the next step of reproduction is etching, e t c h i n g, etching, and later and later lithography, lithography. So this is how it proceeds. You have cut. And uh, you have uh, engraving, 
then uh, sorry, woodcut, engraving, etching, and then lithography. Lithography, and after that you have photography. So, so this is different ways of reproducing. Earlier days, now, say when you have got you came Middle Ages and so on. Now after Middle Ages, the Renaissance, you know, movable type. Remember, no, movable type. Mobile type, type set. Now we don't have this now. Instead of that, we have DTP, reproduction of written materials. 1646, William Caxton introduced the printing in England. The press. Letter press, which has already now gone past into oblivion these days. Nobody uses letter press these days, do we? No. So this is how it is done. So you have graphic arts, woodcut, engraving, etching, lithography, photography, mobile type, printing. So you have got a printing. Understand? Now lithography, of course, we can see what happened after that is that you found the illustrated weeklies, illustrated newspapers. Photography, we know that presently we find photography that is filmmaking. Photography inherent in it was sound also. Lithography, uh, immediately after that we can imagine after lithography, next is, next is. Uh, we have uh, illustrated weeklies and newspapers. So this is how reproduction takes place. Reproduction, as I said, is it is inherent in production. Understand? Biological also you can see that. What is the purpose of any being in this world? Reproduction. As far as nature is concerned, nature is concerned only about reproduction. And you can see how nature plans and executes its operations. See that, like that, in verse of art also. So that is lithography, photography. And the third point is, so reproduction is a must. Anything you produce, that will be reproduced. A third point is, uh, the rep reproduction then becomes, reproduction itself became an artistic process. That is the thing. Reproduction, as an artistic process, as an artistic process. So you can see one by one now. First, neutralization of the concepts. Secondly, reproduction of anything. And third, reproduction itself becomes an artistic process. Understand? Now, because of this, what happens? Loss of authenticity. Because of reproduction of what's so far. Now I'll tell you one thing. Yeah, you just give an example, you know, a example like this. So let's say, let's think about Pangajuddas, results of Pangajuddas. He is giving a performance. So what happens there is Pangajuddas, he is uh, surrounded by a instrumentalist, he is the main vocalist, and others are even playing different instrument, musical instruments. There is a lighting arrangement, there is a platform, uh, plenty of people, large numbers, maybe thousands of people. If you have watched, if you ever have watched performances of Pangajudas or Umbai recently done, or that is, uh, that uh, Gayatri Ashok, See, such singers, gazelle singers. I am stressing, I, I am taking the example of gazelle singers because I think that probably you might be also interested in that. Not that a performance you can see. Film songs, yes. But film songs we don't see, no. The You can see, of course, concert by Yeshadas, concert by Rafi, concerts by uh, other singers. Say Kamukara Purishottaman and all, or uh, we have got in Malayalam great singers like uh, P. Leela as Janaki. So that they don't, we don't, that's not very common, isn't it? But this itself is a program. 
this gazelle thing is usually they don't go for any other uh, performances. I think they concentrate only on gazelle singing. So that's why I took uh, that example of gazelle singing. So what happens in this performance? See that performance. It is you. That is the original performance. Now you take your recordings. You videograph the whole thing and take it to your home and sit in your drawing room or in your bedroom and play it again. See that how what a difference is there from the original performance and the performance that you watch in your in your sitting in your library or sitting in your bedroom or drawing room. So this difference in it. And what are these differences? The moment you take a videograph, a performance by Let's Say Pankaj Dudas, take it home. It is not the performance of Pankaj Dudas, but it is only a copy of it. And that copy loses its authenticity because there are some reasons for that. And the authenticity of work of art, if you take it as a work of art, you have to take it as a work of art. Then a work of a genius, something that uh, uh, there is something there is something mysterious in it. There is something uh, uh, some sublimity in this. So that is the value in that. All those things will be lost the moment you take it to you privatize this. The other is a public performance. Now you are privatizing that. When you privatize that, what happens, you know? Its authenticity is lost. Authenticity is lost. So what is the authenticity? What gives authenticity to the art, to your work of art? What gives authenticity to a work of art? First and foremost, authenticity is given by here and now. Here and now. What does that mean? Here and now. Place and time. There is a fixed place. There is a fixed time. Understand? There will be an auditorium. Or a cinema hall. Sometimes converted as an auditorium. So there is a time. 6.30 to 8.30. Understand? But what about the moment you take it to your bedroom? Or your drawing room? There is no time. There is no place. Anybody can take it anywhere. If you have got a, if you have got a system in your car while driving, you can listen to this. So the place and time is lost. The idea is lost. The moment you mechanically reproduce that. So authenticity is lost. Taj Mahal. There is a place. There was a time when it was built. There was a physical time, duration of a time. What about the copy of that you are keeping in the drawing, wall, drawing room, the walls of the drawing room or drawing in your drawing room? It's no place, there's no time, there's no duration, there's no physical time for the physical duration for that. So no other is it. It's only copy. And listen, the second point is physical duration. Authenticity requires physical duration. So, Pankaj yeah, Dudas again, I am taking just one example, the enough minister saying, repeating names of different people, we are speaking about gazelle singing and Pankaj Dudas, and then uh, what we say, or take Tatimha, there is a physical duration. It might have taken years, you will say begin like that, such and such year to such and such year. Or gazelle singing of Pankaj Dudas example, you can say, 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. or 9.30 p.m. There's a physical duration. But what about the copy? When you take the copy, there's no such thing. It's up to you. You can play any time, but there's a fixed time for that. Otherwise, you will not be able to listen to that. You cannot go at 11.30 p.m. and sit in the auditorium and say, ah, where is Pankaj Dudas singing? You won't get it. See that? And Third point is authenticity, historical change. Historical change. 
See, you can see that again. Now, Gazal Singh, <laughs> taking the example. A performance in Chennai of the same person. Now, let us take the example of concert by Rafi, Muhammad Rafi. A concert by Muhammad Rafi in Chennai will be different from a concert in Trivandrum. And the contrast is the same person, same uh, instrumentalist, and so on. Suppose the same thing is done in Chandigarh, that will be different. So changes will be there. You cannot have this, even if the same person is performing, it will be different. Second performance will be different from the first performance, no doubt. But whatever, suppose you videograph a performance, what will happen? Eternal same, the same thing, same. Sounds say everything say. Isn't it? Right? That's why people are why even in this age of videography and you can take it in a pen drive. You can take it with you. Why why people go and see the stage performance of these people? It's because they're craving for originality, authenticity of the work. It's a historical thing. And for this, what gives authenticity is uniqueness uniqueness. So this because a work of art is unique, you find it eh, there is changes. Understand that? That original has changes takes place. It's unique. You cannot compare it to any other performance. You cannot compare it to any other thing. Anupam, you will say. Anupam. You cannot incomparable to any other thing. Like human beings. Your personality is unique. You can never find another person like you in this world. No way you will find. Think of your teachers. How many teachers might have been teaching you? Sir, so right from the, your primary class, your PD, you now you are telling your PD students. Each one is different. Even if they are taking the same subject, that is a uniqueness. So a work of art has got uniqueness. But what about this uh, photogra photogra photographs or um, you find uh, the performance of person taken? You can have any number of the same thing. Again, eternal sameness, isn't it? And fifth is ownership. Ownership. See, think of a performance by our great singer is not. So there is a concept. He wants it. Understand? He is there. Who is doing it? He says, but what about the videograph stuff? Can you say it's a stuff? <laughs> this is the copy of it. It's an image of it. It's not the original. See that? So ownership is something. And then there is a historical testimony. Historical testimony. Historical testimony. That is, there is proof. There is proof that a person came there with his party and sat there and sang songs for an audience from two hours, for two hours or three hours. This historical testimony. What about reading that? The same thing is videographed and taken to your room. Kadavali, for example. Uniqueness and originality. You can videograph it and take it home. What is it? What, what historical testimony is there? How can you say such as a performance was held in your room or at your home or in your school? You cannot say that. But here you can say history. Ah, yes, they were here. Arrangements were made. And so. See that? And uh, seventh is authority. Authority or tradition. Tradition. So these people who are doing or who are making or so forth, they are in a tradition. Poets, they have a tradition. Tradition, individual talent. Tradition and the individual talent. You see. They work in a tradition. Yes, it is concept of tradition. Pastness of the past. What is pastness of the past mean? The existing works of art in Europe. That's the thing. The existing works of art in Europe. That's the tradition. 
That is the pastness of the past. But what about a Vedic kind of thing? There is no pastness of the past. It's a mechanical thing. Anytime, anywhere, he said. Anytime, anywhere. Some, like some advertisements, he said. Anytime, anywhere. But that is not an authentic purpose. So, these seven poems, they give authenticity to the Bhagavad They give, these seven points, they give aura to your work, a uniqueness to your work. Here and now, there is some time, physical duration, time is there. None of this you will find in a videograph of mechanically produced work of No, not at all. Think of the Michelangelo's sculpture of uh, of uh, David's 17.5 feet height, done in a single piece of marble. That's an old thing, What about his photograph? What about his photograph? What about his video? It's not old thing, That is taken But the other thing, it needs to be there. If you want to see the old thing, what? You have to go there. Understand? And it has got a duration. How many days, how many years it has to be? It has, it undergoes changes. Repair and things. What about a photograph? Now, can you repair a photograph? Uniqueness. That is the only statue in the world. Taj Mahal is the only one in the world. The performance of Pangit is the only one in this world. And it's uniqueness. Like your personal ownership. The statue is owned. Who made it? You will say, yes. My client. And historical testament. Anybody will say that it was. In history, it is recorded. What about uh, your video graph? So, therefore, what happens is the work of art in the age of mechanical reproduction suffers authenticity, liquidation of authenticity, and as a result of the liquidation of authenticity, the loss of all harm. For that unique, that sublime nature of the work of art. Sublime nature of the work of art is lost when you mechanically reproduce this. So this is the, you can say, call it a part one of his arguments or of this essay. Going, going. So first and foremost, you can say once again, neutralization of the concepts of creativity, originality, mystery, and uniqueness. So that is, that is neutralized, oh, unimportant. Neutralizing something unimportant. For example, we uh, take attendance in the classroom. Attendance. Uh, some, uh, when you say uh, higher classes, say PD and so on, first uh, these students, nobody insists on attendance because Neutralized. Whether you attend the class or not, you will get the attendance, isn't it? In most places, I think it is right. <laughs> At least, well, I was telling you, because how can you compel a person, a grown up person, to sit there and listen to something uh, till the bell goes? Well, you get a freedom, you get academic freedom. Some days you don't feel like going to the class and you go to the library. So it is neutralized. Attendance is neutralized at higher levels. And you do even feel PhD in this one, attendance process. Like this. So this is neutralized. Listen, second point we said, reproduction is a must. But when you reproduce, what happens is the worst. See that? And photography, then audio, videography, then uh, pen drive, DVD, then a uh, CD, before that you had a, uh, you had tape, send it, petition, petition. When you repeat, 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 the eternal sameness. Listen. So, you have got the production. And uh, finally what happens is, the conclusion is, if you mechanically reproduce a work of art, you lose its authenticity and aura. 
total liquidation of authenticity and aura, and as a result of aura of the work of art is the effect of the work of art in an age of mechanical reproduction. I think that you have enjoyed my class, you have followed the main points. If you have followed the main points, I am very glad. And I even if you have not followed it, you should uh, you can contact me for the further clarification. And the second part we will be doing in the next class. Till then you think about you think of these main points. What happened to how how and why the utilization of concepts like creativity happened? It's because we are seeing developmental tendencies in art and also modes of production. So what is the main, what is the block to the works of art? The mechanical age of reproduction is loss of power. Total loss of power. The unique, the sublimity, the sublime nature of work of art is lost. Okay? So you will see you in the next class. Uh, in the next class, you will see what are the other effects of, or other consequences of works of art when they are mechanically uh, reproduced. Or what happens to work of art when they are mechanically reproduced. Till then, bye. Have a nice time. Enjoy your life.